You turn on almost any other channel and they say these tariffs are all bad. Well, that's the establishment uh, economist and clueless politician uh, approach to trade. And thank God we have a president uh, and President Trump who understands that uh, tariffs on uh, imported goods uh, go back to the founding of our country. They were championed by George Washington and Alexander Hamilton. They are bedrock Republican philosophy going back to the Republican Party's first elected president, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, and for most of American history, we had much higher tariffs on imports. And during mm -hmm. that period, we built the mightiest economy and the highest standard of living in human history. So there's nothing wrong with tariffs. Uh, and as, as you mentioned, already the Trump tariffs on uh, steel, aluminum, washing machines, and solar panels have generated 11,000 uh, jobs, and that's just in six months. Sure. Uh, but, you know, keep in mind, we've lost, uh, we, we lose about three and a half million well-paying manufacturing yeah. jobs every year because of our $800 billion goods trade deficit in this now, country. So we've important. got a ways to go, but we're on the right, right. track. If they can get some sort of a deal on trade uh, that is more favorable to America, as President Trump has been pushing, I would expect, and you know the markets better than I, that that's going to be a major development in a positive direction. Well, it is positive if, if we can reach agreements that are good for our country and that are going to bring back a substantial portion, if not all, of the jobs that have been sucked out of our country. You know, you alluded to China, a $400 billion goods trade deficit, uh, which is, you know, 2 million at least well-paying American jobs. And Ed, you know, the, the reason this is so important is that a job, a job is not just a production input, which unfortunately mm -hmm. is how too many people on Wall Street and too many of their lackeys in the political world uh, approach it. A job is life. Yes. And when you have more well-paying American jobs, you have less family violence, you have less yeah. addiction, you have right. less crime, you have healthier communities. So this could be the greatest social program in, in, in a generation for our country, Actually, but through the private yeah. sector, through the private sector. Creating jobs instead of just handing out money, handing out assistance. Lee Speakerman bringing right. us some important exactly. facts this morning. One of the horrific things nobody even talks about, David, is that this... Uh, set of trade deals we have constitutes the most racist policy we've had since Jim Crow. It's obliterated African-American jobs, decimated inner cities. African-Americans have borne the brunt of okay, this. Okay, frankly, it probably means we're not going to have a deal, which I actually think would be much better for our country. Why is we, that? There is no way that we can sort out the industrial policies, the subsidies, the currency manipulations. It's impossible to police. We need a permanent tariff, a permanent margin of safety. I've recommended at least 15 percent on all imports from China, and that would yield uh, over the next 10 years a trillion dollars for our treasury, a trillion dollars. Our trade deficit with China is right. funding the Chinese military, it's funding the research that they're doing on AI, artificial intelligence, to overtake the United States. Mm -hmm. We are literally sowing the seeds of our own destruction. Let's get the read from uh, Lee uh, Speaker Min. He says that a permanent import tariff would keep factories here, so he wants to obviously to keep applying the pressure. Um, Lee, uh, a lot of people come back and say that's the last thing we want to do. Why? Well, because we cannot possibly police all of the industrial policies, the subsidies, the currency manipulations that China uses to push their exports and stifle American imports. And you, you reported earlier that China's now talking about walking back some of its commitments on intellectual property theft, which uh, it conducts in a, uh, in a grandiose scale, hundreds of billions of dollars from Americans. A tariff would take care of that. Put the damn tariff on. Stop trying to police things that are impossible to police. Raise the revenue. A tariff on just a 15% tariff on Chinese uh, imports would yield nearly a trillion dollars over the next 10 years, Neil. That's enough to make the middle income tax and the Trump tax cut permanent so they wouldn't but, rise, but wouldn't we, expire. We pay for that, that would be Lee, great that, for our country. We, we pay for that. Neil, we're paying right now by losing 10% or more of our middle class over the past 20 years. As I've said before, this importing and offshoring orgy that we've had over the past 20 years has imploded middle class incomes. When you can access workers overseas making a few dollars an hour, sometimes less than $10 a day, that's terrible for American workers. Whatever our trade deal with China, and Lighthizer is a brilliant guy, but the Chinese are ruthless and unfortunate.
unfortunately they have a history of not living up to their agreements. We need to have a glide path to a zero goods trade deficit. Right now, Neil, it's nearly half a trillion dollars a year. We have All to right. borrow that or sell assets to pay for that every year. Half a trillion dollars uh, with China. That is not acceptable. And we have got to take care of that. Any deal we make needs to have a glide path to take that to zero in 10 years or less. There need to be triggers to where any year that we don't meet the target, tariffs are automatically added or increased. And again, look at pickup trucks, Neil. That is one of the greatest economic successes in our country. We've had a 25% tariff on pickup truck imports since the 1960s. And look at it. Three of the top selling vehicles in our country, the three top selling are pickup trucks. Thousands of well-paid American workers at U.S. and Asian-owned plants right. making pickup trucks. It's a boon for our economy. We need to extend that across the board to all automobiles, all manufacturing mm, goods. Know. I that's respect what we've you. I respect you highly, Lee, but man, that that that's a risky venture. There, I, but I want to get you. I want to get you back to talk about this. Always good seeing you, my friend. What's happened is that China has built a new great wall, a great firewall. Uh, around their internet and behind that firewall uh, Baidu and Alibaba have thrived uh, they they have uh, market dominance that uh, exceeds what Amazon and Google and Facebook have in the United States. So what they've basically done, Neil, is create the greatest non-tariff barrier ever uh, in the one part of the U.S. economy where we actually have some advantage over China, greatly diminishing. But uh, we cannot allow that to go forward. And we've got to keep uh, trade tariffs on and, in fact, increase import tariffs on Chinese goods because what's going on now right right under our nose uh, is is disastrous for the US economy and disastrous for us strategically the infrastructure company Huawei which is trying to become the world leader in 5G, which is the new mobile right. broadband technology that has a tremendous potential and which we need to build out of the United States. Uh, that com company, according to U.S. and British intelligence, has embedded technology that enables them to spy on Americans and spy on American companies or British companies or EU companies and EU citizens. We cannot allow that to happen. We have got to say, and we've got to lock arms with the EU, and the EU has got to lock arms with us and say, no way to Huawei. We are not going to have Huawei technology in any 5G networks in any EU country or any non-China developed country that's an American ally. We cannot have that. And we basically need to say, until you allow unfettered access of American internet companies to the China market, you are not going to have access to our market.